Welcome back to our YouTube channel. In today's class, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful Basque corset. Okay, it's a cropped corset actually, as we can see, and it has this elastic sleeve attached to it. And this is what the back is looking like. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. I'm going to be taking us through how we're going to be drafting the pattern for this, transferring it from our fabric, and then how we're going to be concealing all the rough edges using instant finishing. So it's going to be neatly finished both inside and out. If this is something you would like to learn, kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to start the bus taking my vertical measurements. So now the Ample I'm working with is eight and a half inches. My bust point is ten and a half. Under bust is fourteen inches. The waist measurement I'm working with is eighteen inches, but I want the side seams to stop around twenty inches. So I'm just adding two inches to that. And then for the extension that I have in front, you can make that as long as you want. You can just stop around your hip area. The hip area for me is around twenty six inches okay but i want this a bit longer so i'm just stopping that around 27 inches which is here so i'm going to make all of this into a straight line so after taking all of this measurement the next thing i'm going to do now is to take my shoulder measurement the shoulder i'm working with is 14 inches where by two is seven inches so i have seven inches there then i'm going to take my shoulder slope of one inch and then here i'm going to take my neckline measurement three inches by three inches for my front neckline so using my so this is my shoulder slope so now for my hand hold i'm going to take my shoulder measurements downwards seven inches so that i can get a straight line and then after that i'm going to note the midpoint of that straight line so on the midpoint i'm going to go inwards by half an inch so that i can draw my arm over so now on this ham hole line let me just label this this is the ham hole line the bust point the under bust the waistline and the full length okay so here i'm going to take my bust measurement the bust i'm working with is 36 inches divided by four is going to give me nine inches so i have nine inches here the next thing is to connect these three points together using my curved ruler so now i have the three points together and then i'm going to draw my curve so now the next thing is to take my bust pan measurement so the bust pan i'm working with is eight inches wherever i see it's going to give me four inches so on my under bust on my bust point and then on my full length i'm going to take my bust pan measurement and using my ruler i'm going to make all of this into a straight line so on my under bust i'm going to take a dash of one one inch on both sides i'll do this on my waistline also and then on my full length okay so i'll take this dart on my full length also so i'm using both both that and with that here and then i'm going to make this into a straight line so on the bust point i'm going to go downwards by half an inch here or three quarter of an inch because i don't want any sharp points on the bust point area and then using my curve ruler i'll connect from my under bust to that point so here i'm connecting like this on both sides okay so now the next thing now is to take my shoulder slant measurement so that slant that i have on my shoulder i'll take the measurement and then divide it into two so on that point i'm going to connect from there to my bust point that's going to guide me on how i'm going to do my tightening on the upper part so now because this is going to be having a sleeve i need a little bit of my ham hole on my ham hole area so to do this now i'm going to draw out my ham i'm going to measure what i have on my ham hook off. i have around nine and a half inches you can just use half of that or you just determine where you want your sleeves to start so for me i'm just measuring around five inches then i'll note that five inches point then i'll come to my starting point here 
and then on my starting point i measure how deep that's the neck depth i want this corset to be so you can just maintain your ham hole point there so this is totally up to you so i think i'll be working with eight inches okay you can still reshape this if you are not okay with this and then from there i'm going to connect to my five inches mark on my ham hole area using this curve so it's going to give me like a sweet art neckline so this is what i have so to tighten my upper bust here i'm going to be taking a dart of half half inch or three quarter of an inch on both sides and then i'm going to connect that to my bust point okay so now this means that i'm going to be having a shortage of one and a half inches for the two that so what do i do i extend this line so that i can add this back to my ham hole so from where my ham hole stops i'm going to extend it by one and a half inches and then i'm going to redraw my ham hole curve so doing this means that i'm not going to be having any shortage on my ham hole area so you can see what i have there so the next thing now is to start to draw my bust curve so for the first side i'm going to i need to close the bust that before i can do the second side so i'm going to do this first so for that space in between the bust cup i want it to be half an inch so half an inch means that this is on a half scale by the time i open it out it's going to be one inch which is fine for me so i'm going to make the half an inch there and then i'm going to mark it also on my bust point area and then i'll make this into a straight line okay so using my curve driller i'm going to connect from that point to my under bust to form my first bust curve okay so you can see that i have the first part there so the next thing i'm going to do now is to take my circumference measurement so my bust i already took my bust measurement here which is nine inches but because of this shortage that i may have here i'll just measure what i have there is i have quarter of three quarter of an inch so from here i'm going to measure that ball because i've redrawn my ham hole i have excess here so it has taken care of that for me so the next measurement i'll take now is my waist measurement the waist i'm working with is 28 inches where by far is going to give me seven inches so seven inches i'm going to mark it i have three inches here i'll just shift my tape and continue with my measurement then i have my three inches there so i don't need my full length circumference measurement because i just extended this because of the style that i'm going for but my side seam is not going to get up to the full length so i'm just going to stop my measurement there and then i'm going to connect this together so now you can actually hide, add your allowance to this but i don't like to add same allowance to my patterns most times so i'll just add my side seam allowance when i'm but when I'm drafting it on my fabric, when I'm transferring this to my fabric, so now for my boss that on the boss point, I'm going to go downwards by two inches, and then using my straight ruler, I'm going to connect this to my boss point. Okay, so you can see what I have there, and then I'm going to try to extend this before I cut this because I may have shortage. So I'm just trying to make room for this shortage by the time I close my bust that. So now I have this. I'm going to draft my back panel on this other side before I draw my curve. Okay, so for the back, I have my zipper allowance there because I'm going to be using a zipper for this. So from there, I'm going to take my shoulder measurement of 7 inches. And then on my ham hole line, I'm going to take my shoulder's measurement of 7 inches again and make a straight line there, which will be my ham hole line. Okay, so I lost some of my clips there. Let me just explain what I have done so far. After I joined my zipper allowance here, I measured my shoulder, shoulder measurement, then I did my shoulder slant, then I drew my ham hole curve. So now this line here is my bust pan measurement which I got by dividing my bust pan into two and then for my back that I'm going to be taking a dart of half an inch on the waist area and then I'm going to connect it to my ham hole line. 
Okay, so this is going to be my bag that then I'm going to take my circumference measurement. So here, 28 divided by 4 is going to give me 7 inches. So I have around 2.75 here. And then I'm going to shift it and complete my measurement. So here also, I'm going to draw my circumference. So this is what my back is looking like. So now I'm going to choose the style that I want for my back. So now, the, before I do that, I'm going to measure what I have here on my handle for the front. And this is around 4 inches. So here now for my handle for my back also, I'm going to take that 4 inches measurement. And then... I'm going to connect that to the depth that I want for my front. So I'm taking this ham hole measurement here because I want my sleeve to actually be a bit up. Okay, yours does not have to be this this big. You can just stop it around there so that your sleeve will just be a tip. But I want it to be a bit up there. That is why I'm stopping mine there. So now the next thing is to connect this to wherever depth I want. So I'm going to be maintaining my my bust my handhold line as my depth for the back panel and then i'm going to connect that like this okay so this is my back and this is my front so now i'm going to move back to the front okay so that i can draw my bust cup my other bust cup i need to close off this that okay so you just you can see i'm closing it up and then closing it up also means that your it will just decide is going to match up with what i have in front so to make it easier for me i'm just going to draw my curve on this lower part so that i can cut it out and then close so to draw this curve because of this that that i have here i want to try to close this that up so that i'm not going to have any issues by the time i want to join it so you can see the way i'm just folding this on top of each other so that i can close up my that so now after folding them on each other like this, I'm just going to try to hold this with a tape. So after holding this with a tape, I take my tape rule and then I measure the distance, how wide I want that style, that design at the hem to be. Okay, the design at the center front on the hem line. So you measure how wide you want it to be but when you're measuring be mindful that you are measuring on a half scale so whatever it is that you measure here is going to be multiplied by two so if you are okay with three inches width you can just measure one and a half inches and then if you want it to be as wide as four inches it means you are going for two inches and if you want it to be around six inches it means you're going to be measuring three inches here so i want it to be just around two inches so now from my center front here i'm going to measure two inches so I have two inches here, which means by the time I open it out, it's going to be four inches. Then using my curve, I'm going to connect it from my waist. That's where my side seam is going to stop in a curved way, all the way to this hem. Okay. So I'm trying to find a very smooth curve here. So you should do this before you cut it up, so that I don't cut more than you should so now once i have that now i'm going to connect it and then this is what i have when i connect this now i can remove this okay so once i remove it you can see what i have there okay. my paper tape the paper tape that i removed made as taking part of my line so i'm just going to redraw it okay okay so you can see that by the time i want to sew it it will be easy for me to match it up because they are still on the same level so now i'm going to cut this out first so that i can close up my bust that okay. and then you should not forget that you've not added your seam allowance on this so you should add that Or you can just notice on your pattern that you are yet to add your seam allowance okay so now i've cut this and then the next thing is for me to close my bust that so that i can draw the rest of my cup 
so now you can see the way i'm folding this that you close it you can cut it off and then close or just fold like this you can just open so that it will not be squeezing like that you can just open up one of your darts and then opening it up means that you can you have transferred the dart that you are closing to that side so it's, it will be easier for us to close this dart now so i'll just close it so you can see that it is easier so this excess now i'm going to withdraw my line okay so that i'm not going to be having any shortage that's why i have this excess there so i'm going to withdraw this now and then i'll cut this excess off okay so now that i've closed this i'm going to take my cuff and then draw the other side of my bust cup i'm just going to hold this with my tape so to draw this cup from this ample area i'm just going to come in what here by one inch or one and a half inches so if i come in by one inch i'm going to have this and then i'm going to take my cuff now and connect from my under bust to that point like this so now i have my two cups completed so before i cut this off i want to reconcile what i have here so that i can join this easily so now i'll measure what i have on this point i have around four inches and then i'll measure what i have here here i have around four and a half inches so i'm going to be adding extra half inch to this okay so that i can easily join them and then i'm going to reconnect this to my starting point so now i'm reconnecting this to this point now and then because i want my center front to be straight i don't want it low here so i'm just going to make this part straight i hope we understand what i'm saying the gap between the two busts i don't want it to be v like this i want it to just be on a straight line so whatever it is that i have here this is three inches i'm just going to maintain that three inches here now and then i'm going to make this point straight so now i can cut out this part also okay. i'll cut this i'll also cut this part and this is going to be a three piece Cup. so i'm still going to divide this cup but first i need to cut off all my dirt first so here now you can see this little excess that we have here i'm going to start by shaping this half before i continue cutting out my dirt So I've cut out my front now. The next thing is to cut out my cup. But before I cut my cup, I just want to show us that closing we did. So when I'm sewing this together now, you can see that it will just match up on the hem for you so that I can easily shape it up. And then the bust that here that I've closed which also allow these two sides seem to also match up. So now I'm going to cut out my cup using my paper scissors. So now I'm cutting up the two cup and you, you should also try to label this so that I don't get confused. So I'm cutting out the second part of my cup also. So this is my side front, this is my center front. I'm just going to label that CF and side front. So now to make this cup a three piece cup, I'm going to use my masking tape to join it together on the upper part okay so that's why it's important for me to reconcile my upper part so you can see that it just matches up like that and it will be easy for me to sew so now i'm placing them together there now and then i'm going to hold it so you can see that i'm placing them side by side they are not overlapping on each other and then i'm just going to hold it with my masking tape there so now so now you can determine how wide you want this 
upper part to be so from you can do two inches or two and a half inches so from this upper part now i'm going to measure two and a half inches so i'll measure two and a half inches here at the midpoint also i'll measure two and a half inches and then at this side i'm going to measure two and a half inches also and then using my curve driller i'm going to connect these three points together okay So from then now I'm going to connect this and then I'm going to try to blend this very well okay so once I have it like that I'm going to connect it so now I have this to be my one so this is one two and three and then I'm going to cut this third part off Okay, so this third part is going to be cut separately and then the two and three is also going to be cut separately so this is what my cup is looking like now i'm going to cut off my back part also so here i'm just going to extend my boss pan up to this level because I want it to have a seam there. If you don't want to have a seam, you can just leave it like this and then you just hold your dart. But I want to have that seam there, so I'm extending it and then I'm cutting off my dart. And then also here, I'm going to cut off the back contour that I did avoid keeping as my center back so now this is my center back this is my side back and then i'm going to note there that i need to add allowance because there's no allowance on this pattern also on my center front i'm going to note that i need to add allowance to this so i'll go ahead now and cut this on my fabric and lining and then while cutting this i'm going to be adding half a inch allowance round anywhere that i need to join together okay so by the time i cut this on my fabric we'll see where i have added my allowances so now these are my patterns for the front and these are my two patterns for the back okay so i've gone ahead to cut out my patterns on my fabric and as you can see i added half half inch allowance all around and then on the side seam area i added one and a half inches so this is my side back this is my center back this is my center front and this is my side front okay and i also went ahead to cut my lining exactly the same way i'm using this cutting line spider lining so to make it easy for me you can go ahead and add hair stay or interface to this if you want to or if your fabric is not so strong but the lining i'm working with is very okay so i can just go ahead and use it as it is and then i also want to, to cut out my cups these are my three brace cups and i cut out soft wording to pad it okay so i want I to gum this wording to it and then i'm going to trim off the excess on this wording before i start to sew it so for the lines there i'm going to be working with this bias this black bias and i'll be taking us through how i'm going to do this so first thing i'm going to do now is to join my patterns together so i'm going to be joining the center front and the side front together here and then also i'm going to join the center back and side back together i do for lining and also for my main fabric and then also for my cups i'm going to join the two lower cups together first then after joining it, I'm going to add my bias on the midpoint after ironing it. So at this stage, ironing is very, very important. We have to open every stitch at every step of the way. So now I'll go over to the machine and start to do this. And then I'll bring it back to show us what I am doing. So joining this is quite simple. You just need to place your pattern on it. 
and then you just pick them one at a time so that you don't get confused so i'm going to sew it like this i'm joining the back first and after joining the back i will lift up my pattern again and then pick the next one so i'm going to place my pattern on it exactly how it's supposed to be again and then i'm going to place them right side facing right side and then i'll go ahead and sew it so that is how you're going to join all of them so that you don't get confused on which one goes with the other For the lining again i'm going to pick up this and then pick the next one place my pattern back on it then pick the next one from the side also place my pattern on it and then i'm going to knot them and take them together like this and then i will sew so the same thing that i've done here is what i'm going to do for the front also so after sewing it i'll take it to my ironing table and then open up all of my stitches so i'm joining the front next so what you just need to do is pick your side front now and then place them on each other right side facing right side and then the next thing is to sew it so that is how you join them it's very simple to to join once you get your patterns right that's the most important thing Joining it is not so difficult. So when you open it up, you can see what we have. You can see what we have now. You can see the shape we have in front. Even if you are not okay with it at this stage, you can still shape it by just folding it over like this and then you can still trim up the excess and then you can see the space that we have here so this is what two inches give us and then i'm going to be using my bias on the center front here on the dark lines and also on this side so that will be after i have opened up my stitches so i'm going to sew the lining also now so for the cups also all you just need to do is place your pattern on it then place pick them up one after the other then replace your pattern and then you sew so now for the cup we're going to be joining the lower part first open up the stitch before we join the upper part to it because i want to add a bias to the center front now you're just going to sew it one step at a time. You can see that it's not so difficult to join. And then after sewing it and you open it up, this is what you're going to have. So you can see. So now the next thing is to open this. Now you can notch it. And then we are going to open our stitches and then iron it flat before we add our bias to this okay so i don't want this to be too long the next thing i'm going to do now is to cover these seam lines with bias like this and to do this i've gone ahead to open up my stitches here you can see the stitch is open now so i'm going to bring my bias now my bias binding and then i'm going to place it on top of my seam line you can see where i joined the two together and then i'm going to sew it so i'll just lay it on this like this and then i'm going to sew it so by the time i sew it it's going to look like this then after sewing it the upper part that i have left I'm going to sew it to it like this and then I'm going to use my bias to cover the seam line of the upper part also after opening the stitches as also so this is what this is looking like you can see that the slits this the the seams are opened up so I'm going to do everything that I've done here to the other side also 
before I add my bias to the main bodies. Okay, so I lost some clips. Let me just explain what I did. After joining it, I went ahead to iron it. Then I just added this bias on this line so it can add how as many as possible to beautify it. And also, if you want to add boning to this, you can just use it to create your boning channels. So I added one at the center front, and then I added two on the side, and it's running from where my dad stops one runs to the center front while the other goes to the side on both sides you can see what i have here then i went ahead to add my breast cuff to it so i've added one this is the second one which i'm going to be adding next okay and then this is my back so i added one bias on the dark line of the back also so the next thing i'm going to do now is to add the bra cup second bra cup to this then after joining it i'm going to be placing the front and back against each other and then i'm going to sew it on the sides so i'm going to quickly do that now and bring it back to show us the next thing to do because this video is already very long okay so i've gone ahead to install it so the next thing is to iron it but before then i'm going to trim all of this to the barest minimum so that it's not going to be giving me issues i don't want anything packing there so or you can just notch it so after that now i'm going to sew my sides to this so everything that i've done here now i need to do also on my lining okay you need to do everything you have done to your main fabric to your lining also Okay, so I'm going to have to sew my side seam to it. You can see what I have here. This is my handhold for both the front and the back. And this is my main body. So now the adjustments I want to do here, I want to reshape my center front here. So to do this, I'm just going to put my front on fold. And then I'm going to reshape it. So I want to make sure that I have it equal like this. And then on the center front, I'm going to go down with ball. I want to do the same for the lining also. Remember, I'm going to use it to turn us each other. So I just want to arrange the lining well also. So I've placed the lining under the main fabric. And then I want to reshape it at the front area. So this is totally optional. This is just what I want. Okay. So after reshaping it, this is what I have now. And I think I prefer it like this. I don't want it too high. Okay. So now this is what my center front is looking like now. So now the next thing now is to turn this. And then also on the lower part. I'm okay with what I have here. But if you think you feel it is too wide. You can still fold it like this. And then reshape what you have on the lower side also if you, if you are not okay with this but i'm okay with what i have by the time i turn it with half half inch i'm still fine with the space that i have here so for this sleeve i'm drafting i just drafted a small ball sleeve i have around 10 inches or so okay so this is 11 inches on fold by the time i open up it's going to be 22 inches and then i'm going to add elastic band on the lower part here and then i just place my armhole on it to shape out the armhole and then i'll add elastic band on this upper part also to form this small bust so this is what i have left on my entire i just wanted to use i just want to use this for my sleeve so now i'm going to hard casing to this so that i can pass elastic on both sides so I've gone ahead to add my elastic on the lower part and then on the upper part also. So this is what my sleeve is looking okay, like. You can see it's a small half sleeve. This is the excess that I have on my fabric. So now I'm going to be adding the sleeve to my main fabric before I turn it because I want the arm all to be turned neatly with the lining. So now remember I have not added my lining to this so I just placed my sleeve. So when you are placing it, you leave half inch for turning the upper part on both the front and the back and then you fix your sleeve on it like this by leaving half an inch and then you sew your sleeve to the back also and you leave half an inch before we now turn it so i'll go and fix the second sleeve and then bring it back so that we can finish this 
So I've added the second sleeve now. The sleeves are fixed. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to place my lining on my main fabric and then I'm going to pin it all round for sewing. So when I'm pinning for the armhole, I'm just going to put my sleeve, shift my sleeve inwards and then pin like this. So I'm going to pin it round now. I don't want this video to be too long. So I'm just, you can see how I'm matching them together and then I'm going to pin them. So they all have to match. It's very important that they match because we are going to be using them to turn each other and we cut it exactly the same way so this is my center back this is my neckline for the back so now i'm going to match the neckline for the front also and they just have to match so you can see what i have here then you go over to your handpiece again you match it so i'm just going to match everything and then bring it back to show us so i'm going to have to pin it as you can see that they are exactly the same Okay, I've printed it all around. This is my fabric print to my lining. So now I'll take this to the machine now and then sew it around. Then leave a space at my center back here to turn it out. Okay, so I'm just going to sew it around so that I can conveniently turn everything inward. So now for this to be easier for me, I want to try to remove some foam from wadding around the center front area here. Okay, so that um, because the wording is quite thick so I want to remove a little bit if I can so that I can easily iron it as flat as possible at my center front and then also I'm going to be sewing my hemming gum to it so that by the time I'm ironing it the hemming gum is going to help me to make it leave flat as possible so but it seems I cannot open it so I'll just go ahead and sew it and turn it out so I've gone ahead to sew it all around. You can see I just sew it all around and then I left this little space at the center front to turn it out. So now before I turn it out, remember we have lots of curves here. So I'm just going to go in with my scissors and then notch it all around so that it's going to make my ironing process very easy for me. So I'm notching this all around and again you don't need too much allowance for this because it just makes your clothes pack unnecessarily. So I'm going to be reducing this one and a half inches allowance that I have to go to a quarter of an inch or half an inch. So that just be sure that you got your measurements right. You want to check in with your measurements again to be sure that they are all correct. So I'm just going to trim off some of my allowances because I don't need it. So you just notch it there also. So now on my center, I could not remove this, but this is my aiming gum, I've ironed it, so I'm just going to notch it at intervals so that it can lay flat for me. Then after notching it, I'm going to turn this out. So I've notched it all around, so the next thing now is to take my hand inside this small space and then I'm going to bring out everything through that space and do this carefully especially if you are using ready-made bracket so that you don't destroy the core so now they are all out I'm just going to arrange it well then needs lots of ironing so now you can see my ham old area so assuming we added lining to this sleeve also it's going to be really neat but i still turned it on the under ham area so that i won't have any rough edges so this is my ham hold area see how neat it is it has neatly it has been neatly popped in and also on the other side this is what the ham hold area is looking like so now this is what we have this is the full view of the inside of the corset and see how neat this is looking you want to achieve this kind of neatness, you just have to take your time to do this. Okay, so now this excess piece that I have here, you can use your needle and thread to hem it inwards by folding in your remaining seam allowance, or you just stop stitch on it, whichever one is fine. So you can see that the allowance has already folded. So just stop stitch on it so that I can have something in it. So this is what our corset is looking like now. The next thing we need to do now is to iron this very, very well. So we need to iron this well. And our corset 
is ready. Okay, so now this is my blouse. Before I iron it, I just had to install my zipper. So this is the zipper. I'm just going to cut this for and then take it to the ironing table so that I can just iron everything all at once. Then you cut off all this thread. You can see how beautiful this blouse is looking. It's pretty much really pretty. So after ironing it, I'll just hang it up on the mannequin so that we can see what it looks like and it's very important that you make it neat both inside and outside like this because remember this side is going to be showing so you don't want it to be rough so now i'll take this to the mannequin and see that we can see what this is looking like okay so this is what our preset top is looking like you can see how lovely this is it on our mannequin and i'm even here to iron this by the time i iron it and it becomes really flat it's going to come out even more beautiful so this is the neckline area here to iron it also this is my sleeve you can adjust it because of the elastic and this is what the back is looking like you can see how sleek it is on the back also it's a very beautiful corset top and it's really easy to make you just need to follow the steps very well and i'm sure you are going to get it i hope you enjoyed making this tutorial with me if you enjoyed this let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye